Hello. Today I wanted to make a brief um, macro video um, involving the basics of them. There is a lot involved with them that you can delve into um, and really customize and be really smart and code-y with, but I am not that person. Um, I use them for simplicity and things where I want things to be smoother and quicker, um, but you can totally delve deep and go as far as you need. Not five minutes ago, I was trying to help someone who had a macro of about 20 commands in length, and I was completely over my head. Um, so this is very, very basic stuff here that I'm going to be showing you today. So um, macros, as they are defined by Rule 20, are user-defined shortcuts to commands you regularly want to repeat. So it's things that you want to do um, over and over again um, that may not necessarily already be built into the system itself through character sheets and things like that. Um, and there are ways that you can kind of flavor up your, your abilities and your game. Uh, for example, in my Pathfinder game, um, I have made a couple macros for myself, which you can find in the Collections tab, the three dots with the three lines. Um, I made a perception check. And it looks like this. So it is um, slash me perceives, which is a code for um, whatever me is. Like, let's say I am as this character. When I click that, it'll say Crin Vidal perceives. And then it rolls the dice because I have slash roll 1d20 plus 17. It's basically as if. I was typing in it, it just pops it in there for you and it processes all the commands. Um, there's lots of customization you can do if you are a GM as well. You can make it visible to only certain people and things of that nature. Um, so that's basically what a macro is. It's just a way to do things faster. Like instead of me typing out 1d20 plus 17, I can just click uh, the perception check button and it pops up. So I'm going to build one over here in this game, um, starting from scratch. Um, and this is one specifically targeted to people who play Pathfinder 2nd Edition with me. Because for those who don't play it, there are ways that every character at level 1 can have multiple attacks. And the rule is that um, for each subsequent attack, it is a minus 5. So your second attack in a round is a minus 5 penalty, and your third attack is a minus 10. Unless you have agile weapons and other things of that nature. But let's, for this example, let's pretend that... They don't. It's a guy with a great sword, and he wants to hit uh, three times in one round. So I've made a macro that I found. Well, I kind of found it. And so what this means is that you're going to roll a d20, you're going to add, and then this question mark means it's going to come up with a prompt. And the prompt is going to say attack bonus with a bracket and a bar of zero. And then at the end, it's going to add negative five. So you in in this. Uh, menu when it pops up you're going to type in your bonus and then it'll do the calculation for you. So I'm going to put that in the bar. When you click that it means it's going to appear at the bottom of your screen and when I click second attack it's going to ask what's my attack bonus. I'm going to test something out and see if I put a question mark here if it actually asks unless it messes with the code. Let's see. Testing it out. Great so attack bonus is and I'm going to say they have a plus eight. If I click that it'll automatically do it for me. So 1d20 plus 8, and it subtracted the 5, so it did all the math properly, and it gave me a 19. So that's very, very basic. You can even put in um, other text, like I did in the other one. You can say, um, slash me swings um, his great sword with immense strength. Oh, strength. Okay, and then when I hit save, it should update, and when I click that, ask for my attack bonus, 8. There, I swing my great sword with immense strength, and I got a 12. So that's just one of the ways. Um, and then if you wanted to do a third attack with a minus 10, because that's how it is in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, I highly suggest this for people who are in my Pathfinder games and have multiple attacks. This will save you a lot of time third attack. You can just copy paste it in there. Um, this one will be, we have to make sure this is adding minus 10. Um, in the bar, it'll prompt plus 8. And there we go. 
So 16 plus 8 minus 10 is 14. So it did it for us. Um, there are other things you can do with it, such as um, attribute calls. It could like, you could put in add your dex bonus um, by using the at symbol. Let's just test that out. I've never done that before. So let's just pretend that we're adding our at uh, dex. Oh, look at that. And it'll actually give you a drop down of who it is coming from. So let's say it's the dex of the fighter character. And it'll actually give you your character's name there. And so if I click that, it'll add the dex. Never mind. It didn't work. Did I put it in the wrong one? Hmm. Interesting. What is this? I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, there is also, I'll send in some links. If you look online a bit, you can find things like this, like a collection of Roll20 macros. Here's one that I found um, for 5th edition. You just have to make sure it's for your, your game system. Um, so you have like a party health check. You can check everybody's uh, health points. You just have to copy paste this whole thing into it. Um, you can try, let's see what happens if I do this. I think for these, if you copy paste, you might have to passive party, passive perception. You might have to like input things as they are for you. Okay, so no one was found. So I think you'd have to go in and edit um, where these names are coming for. So at, let's see if I do Uther Jonas. Let's try it again. Okay, so it did work. So it took his um, passive perception, which was 10. And just to make sure that that is the right way, um, it is 10. So it's it might take a little bit of work um, on a player's part or a GM's part, but in the end, you will be able to expedite a lot of things um, that you normally wouldn't be able to. And a lot of the time, if you want something to happen, like 85% of the time, it's going to already be built into the sheet itself. Like if you want to roll intimidation, you click it and it already, if you hover over certain places, like if you hover over the roll, it's automatically doing the math for you there or like a long sword attack. You can see that it's calling upon uh, the strength and the proficiency automatically so that when it's updated on the sheet, it's already inputted in there. Um, and so that's about as much as I can share. That's the extent of my knowledge with this is it's, I just use it for simple things like this, like where I want to have multiple attacks or I want to have a quick way to, to quickly roll my perception if I'm playing um, or Rise of the Rune Lords or if I'm playing Pathfinder D&D. &D. Um, another good one is the initiative one that I highly recommend people use if they use the in turn um, tracker, the turn order tracker for uh, the game. So I'll show you what happens. Um, this is what the the code looks like. It's slash me prepares for combat. So whoever, whichever character I am uh, prepares for combat. And then it says 1d20 plus six, which is my initiative bonus for my character and it's tracker. So I have to make sure that I'm clicking on the token that I want to use. So where is my guy? So here's my character. If I have this in my bar, roll for initiative check. I click on him and then I click um, so it's either I can do it here or you can do it as a token action. If you want it to only appear um, as a token action and not down in the bar, this would be good for GMs to show their players. You click on this and now it's a token action. So it's only when I click on him. I can't roll for initiative any other time unless I'm clicking on my token. That's the specific thing that roll 20 needs to know for the turn order. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I'm selecting my tracker. I'm going to click roll for initiative and it will, oh nice, so it'll roll the dice for you, it'll play your little message, and then it will put you in the turn order because it added the tracker tag at the end because it said tracker. So it's adding that number that is the result to this tracker, okay? Um, that's about it. There are a lot of other things that I'm sure I have not covered. Um, I'm just looking at the, the page over here um, and there's a lot of other stuff that you can totally go to town with. 
Um, it's as much, uh, you, you'll get out of it as much as you want to put into it. Um, so I recommend at least trying it out, playing around with it. I definitely recommend the initiative one and the perception check one because those are things that happen quite often. Um, especially with the tracking, it makes it a lot easier when it's automated. Um, it makes rolling initiative a lot faster instead of having to right click them and add them in manually. It's easy for players to click their token, click roll initiative, boom, they're there, done. Um, so anyways, I hope this has helped you get a little bit of a taste for macros. Um, I will put in some links in the description of various useful pages that I have found, as well as the official Roll20 one. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So have a great day and stay safe.